Okay, so again, with activating forces, when we're looking at compression, distraction, torsion, and shear, when you get closer to the extremities, it's more available to you, right? So just really simplistically for the purpose of the camera, distraction, compression, torsion, shear, right? Now, you're going to see that this will be way more movement, right? Your uh, ul radial and ulnar deviation. But if I hold the hand relatively still and I push the forearm across, there's a relative shear. It's really hard to see because it's not going to be gigantic. But can you see that on the camera? Hardly. Yeah. Uh, if I do this. Yes. So if you look at the skin, you'll see a tiny bit. It's very small. There's a lot of ligaments in there that are meant to keep it steady, right? But, so this is a problem wrist because you have used it as a weapon for money. Yes, yes. a weapon for money, <laughs> <laughs> prize fighting. So I can check into the glide of the radius and the ulna, right? So this will be tough to see on the camera and it will be tough to see for you guys in person, but I can hold one still, slide up and down on one side, or I can push up and push down and just see what's happening. Now it's not too bad. Usually you'll find this is the, the radius side, correct? Uh -huh. Yeah, the big one is the radius down at the bottom. There's some stuff going on there, right? So what, it, what I would like to do is just see if I can get that to loosen up. Now the, what I'd end up doing is I work both ends of the radius because the radius is gonna roll. So I'll be up on the top, right? My thumb will get behind it and I'll do a roll and a straighten. So I'll roll it and I'll have my thumb behind to glide it forwards and work there. Not too uncomfortable? No. Yeah, a little bit? Um, slightly. Slightly, but it's not bad. It's not, no, it's right? Now if I just went like that, yeah, not the greatest. So that's why you go slow and you pay attention to the person, right? So what you see as I turn it, I'm not fixating on the ulnar side, but it's going to move in relation to the ulnar side, right? Now, if I go into the glide, this won't be visible on the camera. That feels smoother to you? Yeah. There's something different, yeah. right? Now, when I get into the wrist, I can work the wrist with varying holds. So this hold, see that? on the camera. So this is obviously crossed up, but my thumbs will be basically together. My fingers will meet underneath. So essentially in the, the arch of the hand. So uh, the palmar arch, I, I don't know if that's actually a proper term, but in and around the metacarpals, right? And the, the carpal tunnel. So I'm here and then what will happen is I'll check my deviations, right? So just a big deviation there, there, right? So this clearly works, not so much, right? That's fairly normal, right? So as I go in here, I can go direct because this doesn't feel like much at all, no. right? And now one of the problems with creating traction or compression is the shoulder, right? Because the elbow is going to glide and the shoulder is going to move around. I'm occupied with two hands. So this is where if I wanted to the compression or the distraction, I would have to get patient active. So slightly push your hand towards me, just, or sorry, um, try to punch straight and let it relax. Too strong, <laughs> that's okay. Now pull it, that's okay, I did. I did, I definitely did. Pull it away a little bit, just a little bit. Good, and let it relax, because that helps control. But you see how when I let go, I didn't actually get traction, I didn't get any gain on traction, I just moved his elbow. So it doesn't work as well when I'm two-handed, right? Moving a little bit better? Feel a little bit better? Yeah. It's not necessarily visible, and we didn't do anything good for the camera there. But now if I really want all of it, if I want the compression, the distraction, the torsion, not the best, and the shear, I can do it here because I'm on both sides of the joint. So now on either side, I can use his hand to keep his hand still, or I can keep the the forearm still right so now we work it slightly differently right so you feel that's not working particularly well that will do okay it's not perfect because i'll get the uh wrist flexion but you can see that if i was to translate from the palm to the back of the hand it doesn't work too good so that's kind of where i'm going to go and i'm going to look for some ease to do it and work into the other stuff. So 
I'm pushing my palm into your palm, keeping your forearm relatively still, working through here. Now, one of the problems with the demonstration of this sort is that you still, as always, have to pay attention to the individual and how they respond. So that feels like a, so that feels, let's call it, aside from the fact that I'm like squishing your pulse, that feels like a kind of floaty spot. Yes. Yeah. Now, the moment I do that, it adds something into it. But if I do that, it feels nice again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I can move into the stuff that feels less nice. Now, this is going to be a little bit muscly for me because I'm trying to move a hand that doesn't move a ton in a way that it doesn't move a ton. So sometimes it's in the major motion, sometimes it's in the minor motions but you have to pay attention. So again, keep in mind that the problem with a technical demonstration of this nature is a lot of it's bespoke to the individual, but the concept is the same. Still moving, right? And then sometimes I have to overpressure on this side, but sometimes I have to overpressure on this side. It's gonna be a little bit of A, a little bit of B, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, almost all the time. There you go. Now when it's like this, it feels like it moves way farther, correct? Now if I take that off, that actually starts to feel pretty darn good compared to where you have been, fair? So the concept of activating forces, compression, distraction, torsion, and shear. In a hold like this, when I'm able to stabilize both sides, I can get them all. It's way easier at the end of a limb. So the ankle and the foot are easier than say the neck or the elbow, right? If I'm, if I'm here, I can do my compression and distraction, right? But if I'm here, the shoulder's gonna move and the elbow's gonna move. It's just not gonna work. Some people would say, go here, right? Okay, fair enough. But then the hands, my ability to control the, the carpals is poor. So there's always trade-offs in the hold. You have to know what you wanna do. You have to try to do that. You have to know what you want the tissue to feel like. The tissue should get, could get tighter without contracting, that's direct. Or if it does contract or jump, then you just make all the soft tissue soft, that's indirect, right? but it's always a little bit of A and a little bit of B, right? So once you get to the ends of extremities, it's way easier to get all of the movements because let's just say if we talk about translation, the only thing in the human body that can really translate is the ends of things. So the hand can translate, but if you look, my shoulder is rotating, right? I can translate his hand as an external force, but I'm still gonna get a little bit of rotation, but I can't translate his arm particularly well right? Because even at the scapula, right? If the scapula is translating, let's just say the scapula translates, there's rotation at the SC joint. So translation is kind of a weird thing, even though it's a term that many people will use. More often than not, experientially, when you're working on somebody, it's going to be a little bit more ABA deduction or side bending, for lack of better terms. Rotation in the frontal or coronal plane. Hopefully terms make sense there. But once you get to the end of stuff, especially the arms and the legs, you can do more of all the activating forces. When you're in closer to the midline, it's tougher to do all of the activating forces, mostly because of your hold. Even though it's possible to do it all here, you can see that my hold makes a difference with what I'm able to do, right? Because this will all work the wrist however I want it to work the wrist. But for me to get all of the movements, I have to make choices and trade-offs, right?